it's not because they don't work hard. I would say that poor people work harder than any other group of people on the planet. I would say that poor people, it is so expensive to be poor because of the mental choices that you consistently have to make. That ain't it. And I'm about to explain some stuff to you. Explain, explain, explain. Oh, make sure that we get this the way that we want it. There we go. Because I want y'all to see everything. There was a comment in Disruptive Mail, the Facebook group. If you're not a member, go ahead and join it. You're going to love the content that it was not practical to move to a wealthy neighborhood. And this person is a financial planner. You know all about stocks. You know, it ain't practical. This is what happens to a person. And we're going to call this person above average. And I'm going to slow down and make sure that everybody can see this. All right. So they live in the hood. Or a working class neighborhood. Now I'm going to explain what happened to me. I was doing very well. When I was in the storage auction business, I was not, quote, a millionaire. I was a high income earner. I had a business that was more like self-employment versus the true business that ran without me. But I was doing well. And I was doing better than most of my neighbors. I knew this. I had a nice house in an OK neighborhood. Neighborhood was going through gentrification, so you had some wild property values. On this corner, this house was half a million dollars. Uh, literally half a block away was this house for $30,000 for the roof caving in that someone would buy and flip or tear down the house. So there were people there with money, but the, the neighborhood wasn't congruent. Like the neighborhood I live in now, you can go miles and miles and miles and miles and miles. You ain't going to find no hood. You're not even going to find a regular neighborhood. It's just the cheapest things around here. Are, there's some condos, which you can get a good deal. But a house, cheapest houses around here are $399, 375 to 399 And typically what they do is tear them down and build something bigger. That's the cheapest house. Uh, this is an older house. No updates, nothing. And a lot of people who have these houses who've been in this neighborhood forever and the house is paid off, they rent it. Because they can get twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars for that house, so it is worth a lot of money as a rental. And it's worth a lot of money as a sell and tear down. My old neighborhood had similar patterns, but the hood aspect or the lower income class aspect was more than the upper income aspect. So I would say it was seventy five percent to twenty five percent. Seventy five percent of the neighborhood was still poor. 75% uh, of the neighborhood still had a lot of issues. 75% of the neighborhood, you had, you, you had people who were ass out. You had people selling drugs. You had prostitutes selling tricks. Now, what happens, and this is very insidious, and it's going to blow your mind. You start coasting. I know it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm like, this is, yeah, you start coasting because that's what happened to me. Co coasting, I think that's it. Because you're doing better than virtually everyone else in the neighborhood. Maybe there's a small percentage of folks who are doing better than you, but you're definitely in that upper echelon of the neighborhood. You start coasting because you are like, you're like here. All right. So this is you. You're at the top. You you have good income, you're comfortable, 
You could do anything in that neighborhood. You look good. Your house looks good. And you're like above average. Now, here's the problem with that. Once you start coasting, you start settling. You start to slow down. You start to think you've arrived. Okay? So this is above average, regular neighborhood. Now, remember that exercise that I had y'all do where you put your finger out and you turn your body as far as you can and then mark that place on the wall. Then imagine yourself going further and you find yourself then doing it. You find yourself going like five, six inches, sometimes a foot further. Well, this is the same principle that happens here. If you're an above average person, you're making money. You're going to only rise to the highest level in the neighborhood. And if you're quote the highest level, where is there, where are you going to go? What's going to happen? Because I believe, and let's talk about where I was mentally. I had came out of a boarding house. I came out of pretty close to abject poverty. So each step that I took, it was like, I'm doing good. And I was doing good. Then I got to a level and I kind of just slowed down and got comfortable. It was like, you know, we had 68, 78 percent profits, uh, didn't even need to make a million dollars a year to make several hundred thousand a year. It, it was great. Right now. Here's what's funny. I've lived in this neighborhood about 12 years, and this is what's happened to me since I've been here. And this is the mind blowing part. I'm the same dude. This, let's have a conversation about this too. If you are a mentally weak person, if you're prone to envy, if you get pissed off because someone's got a better purse than you, you get pissed off because someone's got a new car, don't do this. Turn this video off. Go on about your life because you, you what I'm about to explain to you is just going to mess you up if you're just a jealous hearted if you're not an abundance mindset person, because you're going to fall into a trap and it could end up very, very bad for you. So I just had to say that because this is keeping up with the Joneses, but it's not keeping up with the Joneses to outdo the Joneses. And let me explain. All right. So everywhere I look, I see people doing better who have more. And I remember I was, uh, you know, burnt out a little bit from the business, uh, Francine, she still was alive. She had cancer and I just wanted to chill. I, I want you know, I got me an apartment and I started to crank on my e-business. And what's funny is when I focused on that business, because, you know, during the storage auction business days, I was doing several different things. If I had focused, I probably, I think we would have crossed over a million, probably year five or six, but I was chasing myself. So I move here and I'm walking down the street and I see a Ferrari and then I see a Lambo. Then I see a Range Rover. And, and when I first moved here, I was like, is everybody in this neighborhood rich? And the answer is no. There are many normal people here who rent apartments so their kids can go to better schools in the district. And Slowly, something happened to me, and I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of it. I started to ask myself this question. What can I do to get that? What can I do to get that? What can I do to get that? And it was real interesting because it wasn't done in jealousy or envy. It was like, 
Hmm. Like the thing with me having two cars. Someone asked a long time ago, it's like, why have two cars? And my question was, why not? So a lot of my self-limiting beliefs disappeared. I had put a ceiling on myself. You know, because the thing is, you, you hear, well, rich people do this. Rich people do that. Rich people are like this. Uh, rich people, they're all on drugs. Well, I live in the neighborhood with bona fide rich people. And what I see, and this is something else, too, because I posted this thing about um, why many Americans are suffering economically on my Facebook page. And this guy comes up and he says, well, one of the reasons that is they're having too many kids. Well, here, if you didn't know, and actually, Donald Trump Jr. is an example of this. How many kids does Donald Trump Jr. have? Four or five. And what I've, and look, Donald Trump, how many kids does he have? Seven. And then there was an article that rich people are having more kids than ever. They're having three, four, five, and six, and seven kids because it is a sign of wealth. If you can have that many kids, you can put them in private school, you can raise them well. That is a new status symbol. Or is it? Back in the day, rich people had a ton of kids. You go back to the 1920s, the 30s, the Vanderbilts, the Mellons, they had a gang of kids. So rich people still get married. Marriage rate for well-off people is still the same. And rich people are having a lot of kids, a lot of the kids. And this is why you often see the guy who is my age or older after his first or second or third wife, he marries a young hot thing and have two or three more kids. Because here's the thing. After you get past paying regular bills, you get to the point where if you wanted to, you can go out and buy a Bentley. Cash money. It ain't going to hurt you. Your thinking changes. You start thinking of what am I going to leave behind in this world? What am I going to leave that's going to say I was here? You transcend money. But if you stay in the above average income and you live in a regular neighborhood where you're doing better than everyone else, you may never get to this way of thinking. It may never, ever happen because you don't know what you don't know. And that's one of the things that happened to me because when the self uh, limiting beliefs disappeared um, new doors opened up I started to look at things different I started to act different um, I um, looked at the world so differently it was just the craziest thing because typically you guys have never heard me say realistic you've never heard me say average or you never heard me say practical because where I'm at in life ain't practical for me with no, no cop, no degree for me to live better than 99% of the people in the world. They ain't practical. You're not going to get rich doing practical stuff. And let me break this down. All right. The average investor does not outperform the market. If you're going to get rich investing, there's three ways that you're going to do it. Number one, you have a lot of money already. Gary V um, had early access to Uber, Facebook. These are not just accredited investors. These are people with net worth of about 10 million, 15 million, where they could throw a million away and if they lost it, it's not going to change their life. These investors have access to companies when they're really going to make some money. Because if Gary V had invested a million or two in Facebook and held on to it for three or four years, that was like $20, $30 million appreciation. So you're already going to have money. The second way that you're going to get rich investing, if you are 
extremely smart. You are genius level. Because this is what you see. You see these people who go from literally $500 to $30 or $40 million. Because in the market, there's several ways to make money. You can make money buying stocks. You can make money renting stocks. You can make money uh, betting against stocks. You can make money uh, buying. There's so many ways. But the thing is, it's highly, highly technical. There ain't nothing simple about the stock market. You could buy really good stocks and hold them for a long time. That, that can work. But the operating word there is hold them for a long time. And once again, this chat, this stream is not supported by ads. So be sure to super chat five, twenty, thirty dollars or fifty dollars. Thank you. So you're going to have a lot of money. You're going to be extremely intelligent. Are you going to be a criminal? A.K.A. Bitcoin. First, a report comes out that the reason that Bitcoin appreciated so much was due to market manipulation. Then another report came out like, well, really not. It's kind of like Trump and the uh, IG report. Uh, people putting their own interpretations on things that aren't there. I have said this before this report came out that the market was manipulated. And also, everybody who has made money wasn't messing around with, you know, people who can make, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 K a month. They weren't messing with Bitcoin. This was new money. And I'll give you my thought process on and I'm going to see what happens this summer, because if Bitcoin keeps dropping because the summer is typically when the economy recesses or money reallocates and a lot of money, people don't have money for investing. If it keeps going down and no new money comes in, the true value of Bitcoin, which I figure would be fifteen hundred to two thousand, which is still better than where it started. But. I think once the hype gets out the market. So those are the three ways that you're going to make a lot of money in the stock market. Number two, you're not going to save your way to being wealthy unless you already have a very high income. This is why 75% of the country is poor. I've showed you the numbers before. I showed you average income. You're not, let's say you are a super diligent person. You don't spend any extra money. You take your lunch to work and you put money in the stock market. Diligently, you know, you're putting in like 20 percent of your income in the market. Your money's going to grow. How many people are putting 20 percent of their money in the market? How many people are that diligent? Because this is one of the big things you have to have. And this is what a lot of people try to get into, quote, investments. They have a lot of credit card debt and they're trying to invest. One of the first rules to investing is you don't have any debt. All that money that you would be using towards debt, you can use to invest in the market. Most people who are in the market also have debt. So they're trying to put money in the market and they're trying to pay down debt, which means that they're diverting their money, which means their money isn't as powerful as it would be if it was being allocated in the proper way. So you're not going to save your way to wealth. You're going to have to do impractical stuff to make money in these markets. That's what you're going to have to do because essentially um, people don't understand math. Now, what's really impractical starting a business of uh, Failure rate is high. Uh, many people feel that can't do it. And we're going to change that here at Everybody's a Millionaire. That's right. Everyone's a millionaire because everyone has a dream. Everyone has hopes. And you can make a million dollars a year selling toothpicks if you have enough scale. And your margins are correct. That is one of the things that's happening in this market. Let me get into these comments real quick. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. And I'm just going to go through this. Be real. Thanks for being the moderator. Honey Bunny. Thank you, Stefan. Archangel. Charlatan. <laughs> What's up, Douglas? Stefan. Share the state, Mr. Sandy. 
Um, Sarah and I, Johnny Walden, Health Before Wealth, Free T3, Vance, Mr. Sandip, Moonlight, Moonlighter, Archangel, thank you for being the moderator. Michael Allen, what's going on? They're definitely on the T bar T ball field. 2027 depression. Oh, it's coming before then. It's coming way before then. What's up, regular web guy? Thanks for being the moderator. Green Machine, what's up? What's going on? 285 property. What's up, Michael Walton? DJ Slink. That's funny. I sold my Samsung, Mr. Sandeep. It is extremely expensive being poor. Everything is, I got to do this. I mean, the stress level for being poor is ridiculous. Archangel, Agent J. Poole, thank you. A financial planner giving that kind of thought can't manage the money for me or more than just thinking, but the comment especially. Poor people are lazy today and mindset and change. I'm going to disagree with part of that. Poor people have been indoctrinated into a way of being in these United States of America that does not serve them well. I don't think, remember, I used to be poor. I was working two and three jobs. It ain't the work ethic. It's the lack of knowledge in their place in the food chain. Because I don't work as hard as I did when I was in that boarding house. And when I, I'll define that. I got up at 4.30 in the morning. No, 4 o'clock. Was at the labor ready at 4.30. And I didn't get home a lot of days until 8, 9, 10 o'clock. Bunch of 16-hour days. But I wasn't getting paid for those 16 hours. I was only getting paid for 8 or 10. So a lot of waiting around, didn't have a car. Some will disagree with that notion that poor people are lazy. There are some lazy people, granted, but there's a lot of hardworking, uh, very ambitious poor people who do not have the right mental tools and the right financial tools to make money <clears throat> because they are, how can I say it? They're living a false dream. 285 property. Most financial planners live check to check. Wow. What's up, Akuna? It seems everybody wants to borrow money when you're working class. Johnny Walton. Uh, that, that's a big, big problem because people are borrowing money to start businesses, which sometimes that can be cool. But to borrow money to invest like a lot of people maxed out their credit cards buying Bitcoin because Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, all stopped people with their credit cards from buying Bitcoin. And I don't think this was because they were like uh, Bitcoin haters. They were just like, we're going to lose, we're going to lose money. This, this client is going to bankrupt and we're not going to get our money back. Uh, Stefan. In the hood, you're surrounded by people with limited thinking. Most people adopt their way of being. They dress, think, and eventually act beneath their potential. Others get robbed. True. Uh, Akuna, thankful where I live. The elementary school my kids go to teach Mandarin one day a week. Very interesting. Lambo Shake. That's an interesting name. Age of J. Poole, uh, two cars is a thing called choices. You should get on that if you can. <laughs> That's funny. Once again, this live stream is supported by people, the audience of everyone's a millionaire. What's up, Christian? Diana Thompson. Admiration is fire energy to ignite growth and envy is a lack of sparks. I like that. Free T3, thank you. It's a perfect Father's Day message. Douglas Jones, it's really hard to beat program trades in the stock market. Very much so. Uh, Joe, 
Uh, we'll be talking about that at Hustlers Kung Fu. Douglas Jones, God told me once that to be a program trader, you have to be ready, willing, and able to lose 100K in less than a day. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I have a friend who day trades and she's lost a lot of money in mere hours. So, yeah. What's up, Flying J? Bitcoin was manipulated, dude. Uh, Bitcoin will go up again and it will end at 40K. How much money do you want to bet on that? I want to see, I want to test your faith. Throw out a number of how much money you're willing to bet that that's going to happen because everyone can have an opinion. Because right now you have an opinion and I have an opinion. What separates me potentially, because I don't know, I'll put you, I'll bet you $10,000 right now, it ain't going to go up to 40K. If you're willing to bet 10, we can sign papers. And if it goes up to 40K, I got to give you, I got to give you 10K. That's how sure that I am of my opinion. And it's just an opinion because right now they're propping it up because if Bitcoin falls another thousand dollars, that's going to create a panic situation and the price will go lower. And that's why they're propping it up because uh, I took some time out and it's going between 6,200 and 6,500 every day. And then, and the trading is real different because it goes down during the day, but it goes up at night, which, good Lord, which makes me think that there's some prop ups in the foreign markets. Drill East Coast. Good Lord. Why did it jump like so hard? Drill East Coast. Poor isn't lazy all the time, but it's a poor mindset that keeps poor people poor. However, some poor transcendent mindset break the chains and move up. Why are coaching? Saving your way to any significant amount of wealth is damn near impossible. True. Uh, Agent J. Poole, being poor keeps you from even being able to think about opportunities because you're always running to get in front of your troubles. I'm going to read that again because I used to live that. Being poor keeps you from even being able to think about opportunities. Well said. Well said, Agent J. Poole. Uh, Robbie Rob definitely have an abundance mindset, but my girl and her friends don't. Just last week, me and my girl argued about how fair my boss made 60K on, on the roofing and siding jobs and pays me a few hundred. What's up, Sassy Moxie? Mr. Sandeep. I don't dwell on what people do unless I'm selling to Who am I to look down on anyone? Who's looking down on poor people? Well, first of all, let's talk about why I talk about poor people. I don't know if you think this way or not. I talk about poor people because they're the majority population on this earth. And if they all figured out the game and rose up against all of us making money, we would be fucking toast. So in my effort to serve my fellow man, I am providing Products, services to help people go from being poor to average income, average income to upper income. Because, see, that whole mindset that I don't care about the poor, that's the Republicans. Like, I don't care about separating the mom from her kid, which I think is going to cost them the elections. But this whole notion of just it's about me and unless these people come on my radar, fuck them, is really the wrong way to look at the world. I'm just saying. Pretty much. Mr. Sandy betting. No, 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 no. Don't run. See this. This and this is my point. You have an opinion, but you're not willing to put money behind your opinion, which means that you don't really believe that case closed. You know, you're going to lose your money. <laughs> Uh, true. Poor people don't have the tools. They have uh, Archangel. They have been lied to, was presented change. They didn't want to do 16 hours for themselves, but someone else's fine mindset, which is really, really strange. Archangel 3579. A person will not work 
16, 18 hours for themselves, but will freely and easily do it because once we get past those 40 hours, overtime, overtime. And I used to think like that. It's like, how fast can I get my 40 hours so I can get in this overtime? And even with overtime, I was only making 32 bucks an hour. Even if I made the 32 bucks an hour, bring out the calculator. What would, what would that be? I don't even know. Because I don't even do hourly wages anymore. 32 times 160 is only $5,100. Um, <laughs> Robbie Rothfax. I explained to her that I'm literally being paid to be taught how to run a successful business from the ground up. Plus, on day, I'll be getting 40K for a two-week job. Don't hate the game. Play it. Robbie Rob, congratulations. And since your girl is pregnant, she's all about that security. Everything you do, everything you talk about, if it, ain't, if it sounds like risky, she going to freak out. Uh, Douglas Jones, I bought Bitcoin, Bitcoin at 17K, sold it. For, wow. Wow, man. I'm sorry to hear that. Fred Edwards, love, people talking about Bitcoin aren't traders or investors, just optimistic spectators. Pretty much. Uh, Fred Edwards, dangerous. I trade futures 85% of the days I win. That's a really good rate. You must know what you're doing. Christian Amerson, thank you for the $10 super chat. Once again, this stream is not supported by ads. Just saying, go ahead and drop that super chat. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, $500. Do what you can. Appreciate you. Uh, FK, Bitcoin is going between zero and $10 with an occasional pop, but what do I know? I think Bitcoin is going to settle like fifteen hundred, two thousand, which is still way above where it started. I think once the crazy people get out the market, once all of the spectators are pushed out the market, then the real because I don't think it's ever going to go back down to like zero. I don't think that's going to happen. Joe Augustine, how do you prevent your employees from knowing how much money you made off them so they don't become salty? Um, you don't. You, I, I would put that out there free and clear. Because if they're going to become salty, that means that they don't know how the game is played. Big brother in life, what's your thoughts in real estate investing? Real estate investing is great if you know the game. You got too many people who are trying to get in the game and they don't know the rules of the game. <laughs> I mean, seriously, Agent J. Pool, I see someone pulled his, uh, his trigger. Uh, 285 property. I was once poor, changed my mindset, changed my pockets. Douglas Jones over time damn near killed me at one point. I used to do what was called doubles, where you work two eight hour shifts and you try to get two doubles in two days. So that's 32 hours. Then Wednesday would put you in 40. So Thursday and Friday would be overtime. I played that game for years and it will kill you. Archangel, exactly. My ex, all she kept telling me to work 12 hours. I don't feel like getting up. It's a trap. I know. Uh, call Sneed. Rich side of town grocery store gives away enough samples for someone to live off. Poor side of town, they secret security guards to keep people from taking items. Call Sneed, that's a very good observation because the Costco, and this is how they trap you. Costco, because there's two of them, one near Perimeter and one in Brookhaven, literally six, seven miles apart. And they will like, they will encourage you to get more samples where you get full because they know that if they you like it, you're going to buy it. Poor side of town, Asian owned shop. You buy, you go. 
What's up, Donnie Breeze? Fred Edwards. There's a few great traders who pass on their knowledge on YouTube and forums. Never pay for a course unless you already know the basics. Now, I would say that's some good advice because many people are trying to leverage nothing into a lot of something. Now, I, I will break it down the chart in a minute after I go through all these comments. Ridiculous TV. Taxes eat up OT. It's no point in doing it. Take 40 hours a week and work on getting out of the hole after work. Uh, potentially, potentially. But I feel that if you're going to work that hard, you need to work that hard for yourself. Douglas Jones, Costing, you, you couldn't be more right. I have seen security beat folks into puddles of pus over a box of pasta. Good Lord. Once again, you, you know that game. Because when I get back into real estate, I'm going commercial. Charlton, hourly employees see greatly diminished returns after 18 hours old time a week is baked into the tax formula. I used to do... And also, there was periods of times where we couldn't get over time because I remember I did a double and I did a double. And Wednesday, I had 40. Nancy checked the time sheet. She said, you go home. You got a four-day weekend. I was like, what? Then I went ahead and I called up my PRN job and said, look, I got like three extra days. Y'all got anything? And someone wanted to take off. So uh, I took that. I mean, it was insane how I used to work. Dan Thompson, organized a plan to sue Department of Interior for fraud and waste abuse for children held illegally. I think that's going to happen. I think a lawsuit's coming. No, I really think a lawsuit's coming. Uh, what they're doing, and not to just jump into that too deep, when they separate this kid from their parent, they become the de facto custodian of that child. And those children have a legitimate reason to sue because you're taking someone who's not an adult and you're putting them into a system. So these kids, I, I think lawsuits are coming. I just do. Robert, Rob, well, you ain't lying. I got to get results ASAP so I can get out of, on board. It's hard to balance because I want to take care of home, but I refuse to support an adult who doesn't pull their weight. Yeah. I'm going to have to talk about that on disruptive mail because, um, When a woman is pregnant and she's in a committed relationship, it's on you. I mean, I don't care. This is what I'm talking about. Like this independent lady status, that shit goes out the window. It's on you. And it's a lot of pressure as someone who's been there. Perceptions me that, hey, big brother, Glendon, I've been, uh, I've uh, sent her a question from. If a man makes 30K to his name, if a man has 30K to his name, what should be his first move to grow it? Put it in the bank and find a business that you can start earning income from without investing that much. Because 30 k for a business is not a lot of money. And it also depends on what kind of passions and dreams you have. Like, all right, say you're a chef already and you make these delicious little cupcakes and all your friends and everything uh, rave over them, right? So you got 30 k Go out and get you a food truck, make your cupcakes on the truck, and drive around town and drop those cupcakes off. You would make money because, one, you already know what you're doing. Two, you got the money. But if you're, like, got 30K and don't know what the, what the hell you want to do, sit on your money. Sit on your money. And then explore businesses and hustles and get yourself some sales experience. Ridiculous. A lot of CNAs and nurses do dope. It's, hey, it's, it's part of the medical hustle. Agent J. Poole, seven days a week, five 16 hour shifts in those. I was dying in that madness and the money was not worth it. Rarely is. Uh, honey, money. I find it better to just negotiate your pay a bit higher when you get to job than to treat your business a hustle like overtime and give all your extra hours to that. I agree. 
I had a boss that got scared when he was showing me the time application and accidentally revealed what they were charging the customer for work on an hourly basis. Well, part of what's going to happen, especially if it's a specialized skill set, is when you see that, you're probably going to jet and try to do it on your own. And what happens to most freelancers is they don't have the sales and marketing skills. So it's kind of like a hand-to-mouth existence. Jamal Stiff, do you have to put money in a 401k? I mean, once again, it depends on your financial goals. He was surprised when I just accepted. I already knew they had to charge double to pay me and pay all the overhead and make a profit. It's all part of the game. Yes. Uh, let's see, where where do we go? Good Lord. Because I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Dre's Coast Real Estate's the place to be. Seriously, never seen people make more money than in real estate. Than they build... Uh, that would not be true, Dre, East Coast. Uh, I've seen plenty of people make way more money with a business. Zuckerberg <laughs> has made billions. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know about that. Uh, once again, real estate's a good place to park money and to grow your wealth slowly. Joe Augustine, if a CEO who pulls up in his work in a Toyota when he owns a Porsche just so his employees don't ask a raise, he pretends like he's struggling. That's a fine line because I understand that. Actually, I do. Um, Donnie Breeze been trading options for seven years. It's a 80 20 ratio, 80 20 win ratio done correctly using my option profit for down payment on rental property avoided capital gains tax. Awesome. All right, because we got. All right, I have a few people who, okay, did I get all the Super Chats? Hold on a second. Christian, there were some other ones. Ah, Johnny Walton, I'm trying to save money, but my mother's now saying she needs to help her in the bill. She's getting sick. Uh, Johnny, um, figure out what your mom's bills are, because typically older people, their bills aren't that much, and create a fixed rate and create a hustle to help that. Archangel, great content. Thanks for this channel, G. The transformation of a hustle to a new wealthy business owner needs a platform. Awesome. Thanks for the $10 super chat. And right, once again, this stream is supported by the community. All right. Good Lord. Uh, I have, if I said it once, I said it a million times. When some injustice happens to one person due to immutable traits and nobody puts up a fight, expect that to eventually happen to everybody. Pretty much. Pretty much. Oh, brokers. Brokers are like, you know, like uh, Coinbase. Coinbase made a billion dollars in fees. So if you're like a broker in the middle of selling, yeah, that's a lot of money. All right. So uh, thank you, Donnie Breeze, for the $5 super chat. All right. So let's get back to the lesson. Once again, this channel is supported by you, the community. Everybody wants to be a millionaire. All right. So when I moved here, my self-limiting beliefs disappeared. I mean, and it, it wasn't like this was this conscious thing. It just happened. And I'm going to explain why I think it happened. I saw wealth everywhere. Because going back... All right, I'm just... I saw wealth now this is one of the things because uh, the thing I've posted in disruptive mail the Facebook group 
was if you want your kids to have a shot at being wealthy, you need to be in a rich neighborhood. Now, I know this is going to offend many of the Hotep Nation, but I don't care. If everyone in your neighborhood is just merely trying to survive, merely trying to make it, this becomes what we call a norm. And norms are like habits, hard to change. So, and I can compare this to living in the West End. Everybody was poor. There was a few people doing well, and this is what the criminals preyed on, robbed their houses, stole their big screens. And typically you have good people who are doing well, and they want to be a model of what it is to be like by going to school, getting a good job, starting a business. And they live in the hood, and they have to fight so many battles to, quote, be this model. I think if you're a person of means with money and you're living in the hood, you are a courageous soul. Now, knowing what I know about the power of your subconscious mind, this book, Get It, by Dr. Joseph E. Murray, that day in and day out, you see bullshit. You see crackheads. You see, you see a lot of misery. Now, you can drive up in your driveway, get in your nice house and close the door and block a lot of that out. But when you're driving through it, it impacts you. Now, I am no fool. I know we got meth heads around here. I know we have cocaine addicts. I know we have alcoholics around here. Um, not too long ago, I was awakened by this loud thump. It was like, psh, boom, right? And this guy who was driving the Porsche, and I, I think alcohol was in play, he just ran, he hit this curve, and he ran into a telephone pole. And if you don't know, telephone poles are like 12 to 20 feet deep. The part you see, there's like 20 feet of that pole that's underground. So they don't move. And they out, usually I think they have metal rods in them. So the car, everyone instantly died. So I know that. But here's the thing. Even with the so-called, well, not so-called, they are addictions, the money, the support of the community helps them. You a crackhead in the street, sucking dicks, doing whatever you need to do. There ain't a lot of people out there looking for you because there's not any money in your family for them to rein you in. Here, even the crackhead, even the meth heads, even the cocaine addicts, their families have enough money to get them treatment so you don't see them out here stealing. Another benefit of living in a wealthy neighborhood. But I saw wealth everywhere. And it became my norm. I started to notice the differences because when I would go to neighborhoods that were okay, I really didn't notice anything. It's just like I'm in this neighborhood. But when I started to leave my neighborhood and to go out to other places, I would be like distinctly notice the change. Just like when an airplane takes off and you get up to a certain level and your ears start popping, it, it was just like that ascension or that, well, the descension, when I come down from where I'm at into a regular neighborhood, I notice everything. I notice the trash on the ground. I notice so many things. And here's the reason, even if you can only afford an apartment why you want to be in a wealthy neighborhood, is the friendships and connections your children make are going to be vastly different than the friendships and connections your, your kids make in the hood. And this isn't to say that there are bad people in the hood. And Oh, no, this, this they ain't even they ain't even about that. It's just you are friends with Lamar in the hood. He's your friend. He's got your back. He's great. Lifelong friend. Ace Boon Coon. A lovely situation to have. Then you got your your situations, but let's change it. So Lamar, instead of being a hood, Lamar is the son of a billionaire. And he you're your best friends, Ace Boon Coop. And then when you come up with a business out idea, and it's like, Lamar, and I need to borrow a million. All right, dude, let's go golf. You see the difference there? Because Lamar has known you since you were six, and Lamar knows you have a great work ethic. And Lamar's in a position to let those funds go. 
Whereas Lamar in the hood, he's your buddy, you love him, and it's a beautiful thing, but he can't help you. This is the distinct difference, and it's not about better people, worse people. It's about people who have assets and people who don't. And what I found out, and I'm just going to break it to the real. I'm just going to say it. You know how, you know one of the reasons that I got so much pussy is I lived in this neighborhood. When a woman is answering a Craigslist ad and she's driving to your neighborhood and she's like, oh, this is a nice neighborhood that automatically makes her feel comfortable. If I was living in the West End, the shit wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have worked. So I don't care how you look at it. I don't care how you slice it up. You need to get yourself in a better neighborhood. Now, let's talk about racism. Because that's going to come up, too. Since I have been here. I've been stopped by the police. Wow. I've been stopped by the police one time. I was actually doing something wrong and I got a warning. In the stores, the service is always top notch. Now, I'm not going to be someone's fool and say there's no racism out here because there is. But I haven't experienced it. I got stopped by a cop, suspended license. I didn't know. She just gave me a ticket. She could have arrested me, pounded my car. She didn't do any of that. So for me, my experiences living in this neighborhood has been nothing but benefit after benefit after benefit after benefit. And that's why I'm coming to you because you're not going to get wealthy. You're not going to get rich doing poor people shit. And poor people save. Poor people don't innovate. Poor people follow old school stock advice. Yes, old school. Buy stock, hold on to it. That works out for some people. If you could buy stock when you're 20 and hold on to it to 50 and it appreciates, yeah, you're going to have money. But what, whoa, wait, 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 wait. When you're 20, you're a 20 some year old a day and you got all these student loans, you got this high rent, where's the money to buy the stocks? Because you're living like an average person. Just saying. So that's one of the things that I have seen. And I remember when I moved out here and I used to post stuff on Facebook all the time and people were like, well, those white folks don't care about you. And something else I discovered. There are a lot of black people in this neighborhood, not some, not a few, a lot. There's a lot of black housewives in this neighborhood. How do I know when I'm out at 11, 10 a.m. in the morning walking around P, um, Chastain Park? I see these women in their strollers. It's 10 a.m. in the morning. The kids like over a year, you are a stay at home mom. That's a whole nother video right there. And I've seen that a lot of people are nice. There's some people who are rude and they're assholes. But overwhelmingly, most of the people are nice. I just see benefit after benefit. And I came in through this neighborhood in an apartment. Now, let's talk about the apartment. My rent would have been a mortgage in many different places. Uh, my rent was like 11 10 and that's a mortgage on what, $150,000, $160,000 house. And now, because I checked, those apartments are going for $1,900 a month. Same apartment I used to be in. And I just matriculated from exposure. Because this is the thing that just happened to me. Uh, once again, this chant, this uh, every man is a millionaire. There are no ads. This is a community supported channel. So be sure to super chat five, 10, 20, 30, 40 dollars. All right. So let me get back into the comments and see where I leave off. All right. We got Donnie Breeze with five dollars super chat. Thank you. Big brother, I just do BPOs. What is a BPO? What's up, Roger Steele? Oh. 
Fred Edwards. Asians are pro all altcoins, uh, bitcoins more than us. The best 10 trades are 5 p.m. Oh, okay, because I've noticed that. That's thank you, Fred Edwards, because I noticed that like before, early in the morning, Bitcoin would be low. So if you bought at say 9 a.m. or 7 a.m. and held on to it to like three, you could make 800 to a thousand bucks. And now, you know, I just started watching this. It goes down during the day and it goes up at night. Because let's see, what is it now? What is the price of Bitcoin? It's very interesting. Because I'm, I'm following this because I have an assumption. And I don't know if this assumption is true. Let's see. Because I know it's being propped up because if it, if it drops below. All right. So it's 6,512. 6, 6, so it's holding steady. Um. I read an article about that in Korea and they were when they were going to put the exchange in Korea under um, regulations and stuff. Those kids revolted and they were saying, like, I don't want to work a job. That's what I saw. These kids were saying. Cost needs the way the Hotep Nation treats brother polite. I'm convinced that they're embraced in being poor. Joe Augustine is corporate finance going to be covered on this channel, like capital structure, whatnot. Yep. Truth about living in the hood. I know, man, it is rough. Honey, but I used to hate seeing litter on my street when I lived in the hood. I used to fuck with my mental and sometimes it would literally be cool living amongst actual trash. I had to get out of there. <clears throat> it creates a very persuasive mindset. Agent pool, agent J pool. That's exactly what it is. Ascension, get away from the trash and you feel elevated. I mean, it's a big problem because, you know, Earl Nightingale said this in leading the field. And, it, and I noticed it was true. He's like neighborhoods. You don't see any trash around here. You just don't. And then you would go to some. And, but the people are traveling. They're not home. They're working 12 hour days. Then you go to a hood where people home all day and there's trash everywhere. It's what people think of their situation and their environment. Uh, Wire coach is so true. I worked a job where the wealthy would send their kids who had drug addictions or mental illnesses. Yeah, because, I mean, just because you have money doesn't mean that addiction is not going to touch your family. But the way that they treat the addiction and handle the addiction is these kids don't have to go out and rob someone like Pookie in the hood. Pookie got a crack habit. Pookie got to rob and steal shit. Whereas um, Beth, she she has a opioid effort. Her mom and dad's got enough money to give her to keep her from becoming a criminal. Dang, Agent J. Pool, Pookie walking back and forth with track star Judy. It's time. <laughs> oh man. Our change of honey, but I moved to a high end complex where a family moved in with kids and were littering, leaving trash. I stopped them and made them pick it up. I feel remotely bad for uh, reporting them. Mr. Sandep, many Arab millionaires make money in the hood. They're my friends and neighbors. Well, Part of the reason they make money in the hood is no one else wants that business and they open up a convenience stores, laundry mats. So, yeah, I can see that. I can see that all day long. And walk us. There's money in the hood, hard cash money in the hood. Now, no one ever said there wasn't money in the hood. No one ever said there wasn't money in the hood. But let's talk about what kind of money's in the hood. Convenience stores, 
gas stations, uh, clothing stores, sneaker stores, restaurants. There ain't no Nordstrom's in the hood. There's no Costco in the hoods. There's no Whole Foods in the hood. So, yeah, there's money in the hood. And for the people who embrace that environment and start businesses, they're going to make money. Everybody don't want to do that because I'm going to tell you what happened here on Buford Highway. There was a, what's that cheap shoe shoe store? It's, a, it's not Foot Locker. It's, uh, God, they sell these cheap shoes, the pleather shoes. Well, it's a shoe store, and it was in the hood. You know what these mofos did? They stole a jack, and in the middle of the night, they jacked, uh, used a jackhammer to make a hole in the side of the building and made off with, I think, a few hundred thousand dollars worth of shoes. Uh, they had a jackhammer and they had a truck. This is what happens to you, to your business in the hood. You have high shrinkage. You have a lot of problems. Now, also, you also have a high profit margin to help you absorb these losses. But ask yourself, have you ever seen a top golf in the hood? Ask yourself, have you ever seen an amusement park in the hood? So there is money to be made in the hood. No doubt about it. But look at who's making that money in the hood. Look at who's making that money and look at how they're making that money. Uh, what's up, Yolanda? Interesting quote. Those white folks don't care about you. My response, so fucking what? As long as they don't burn crosses in my yard, they can keep their attitude to themselves. <laughs> what's up, Al Gordon? Thank you, Charlatan. I want my disruptive male t-shirt. They're coming. They're coming. A Johnny Walken. Johnny Walkins? No, I can't loan you any money. Uh, when I see people out here begging, I was like, I don't, and it's true. I really don't have any cash on me. I may have a few hundred bucks on me, but I'm not going to break a hundred or give someone a hundred. Yeah, I mean, that kind of racism, it don't bother me because all they do is talk. They don't do anything. The Jeff Sessions level of racism, that's worrisome because he's affecting policy and law. Oh, broker stock options. Okay. Thank you. All right, hold on. Definitely. Yeah, the pregnancy thing. First of all, to be fair to the woman, her body's being flooded with hormones. And they're going to do shit they don't even know why they're doing it. I mean, um, you know, this was when times were good with my, my, me and my ex-wife. And she was pregnant with our first child. And I found her in the kitchen sitting on the floor crying. I was like, what's wrong? I don't know. I just feel so sad. So I got on the floor and we just talked it out. <laughs> You're going to have all kinds of crazy stuff. Hot flashes. Um, <laughs> I think if you love the woman, it's not so much a burden. But if it's just a side chick that got pregnant, man. <laughs> man. It ain't happy. Okay. Now, I will say Boost Mobile, Cricket Wireless, and Metro PCS do very well in the hood. Very, very well. Uh, let's see. Hold on. We just jumped. Good Lord. 
Hey, list. There we go. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, cool. Uh, Linden Tree. I don't know anything about Linden Tree, Johnny Walden. Oh, now that's very nice of you, Mr. Sandeep. Flan J. Uh, my grandmother lived and raised in a small community, and it's a big percent of the blacks. It was cool because the town was sort of small, and we lived in the white community. Some moved in. Some stayed. Both my neighbors were white, older, and they were just pretty cool. But just being in the environment around things that don't motivate was the worst. And that's the environment is huge. I understand and a lot of these business owners end up having to hire off-duty police as theft deterrent. Yep, Payless. That was the name of the store, Payless. Honey Bunny, in the hood, my city grocery stores are scarce in the hood. You might find one grocery store in a 10-mile radius. It's a, it's a, a food desert. Oh, I know what you meant. Purpose Pit. I'm a writer, and I have these followers... They rarely purchased my book as an e-course audio struck me. I created a pre-order for 35 and put it on my account. Within 24 hours, I made $520. Cool. Wow. All right, I'm just going through this. Wire coaching. I owned a restaurant in the hood. Security was 40K a year. <laughs> really? What was your big problem? Costing. Totally different economy in the hood. Never seen a sheriff eviction until I started renting houses in the hood. And that's really sad, too, because here in Georgia, the way the sheriff comes now, they come with a moving. They, they actually take your stuff. They don't put it on the lawn. It used to be. I used to see this a lot and it would just break your heart that uh, apartment would evict someone and you just see their stuff at the front of the uh, property and people would just take it. Erica Nago. Top golf near Bankhead and Howe Mill in Atlanta. They stay packed. Whoa, 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 whoa. You can't put Bankhead and Howe Mill together. Come on now. I live here. That top golf is in near Howe Mill. It ain't near no bankhead. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I like how you tried to slide that in there. Now, for those of you who are in Atlanta, Howe Mill is a multi million dollar neighborhood. It's on the back end of this neighborhood because you take Northside Drive down there. That top golf is because Howe Mill runs into Northside Drive and then there's Georgia Tech. In the property, and then there's Atlantic Station. The golf course is for the people in Howell Mill, Atlantic Station. It ain't for the folks in Bankhead. And on an interesting note, uh, they tore down all those Bankhead projects. They're all gone. So I don't know what they've replaced them with. But you know that Top Golf. <laughs> Come on now. I live here. It ain't for. Oh my God. Now, this is interesting because as they're building it out, there's a natural buffer um, in that area. There is a, a very heavily industrial uh, concrete plant and some other stuff that kind of separates the neighborhoods. But that that is. Yeah, that, that ain't that ain't on Bankhead. I will drive by the day to make sure. But that ain't on Bankhead because that's across the highway. And last time I was on Bankhead, it had improved, but it didn't improve like that. It took 20 years to get Camp Creek going. Charles Town, I've been white all my life and never met a white person that hated blacks that much. What? What's up, David? Joe Augustine, <laughs> please make a course how to develop a spine. Oh man, hold on, hold on, hold on. It just Robbie, I feel the hood looks the way it does because people don't serve others enough. You serve others, you feel pride, and when you feel pride, you don't settle for trash and sloppy living. I believe that, Robbie Rob.
cool, cool, cool. All right. I'm going to find out where this top golf is. Hold on a second. We need a little time out. Because I just don't believe that. Because the demographics do not pick it up. Um, okay. I am seeing two of them. And I don't see the one in Bankhead. You sure that's the top golf? Because I, I, I'm not seeing it. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong place. Because golf is like an expensive, expensive, expensive sport. All right. Top Golf Atlanta. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Top Golf Ellsworth Industrial Boulevard. 1600 Ellsworth Industrial Boulevard. You know, Ellsworth Industrial Boulevard was where all the warehouses and things were for Buckhead. And I, you know how I know that? I used to work there. Yep, it's kind of where I thought it would be. The Fours area. Now, here we go. Ellsworth Industrial Boulevard is off of Howell Mill. Howell Mill is a multi-million dollar neighborhood because Howell Mill backs up into West Paces Ferry, backs up to Sandy Springs, north side. That is kind of where a lot of this stuff starts. This area was never poor. Let me say that again. This area was never poor. And this ain't like one block from Bankhead. Let's go ahead and look at this. Because I'm sitting there like, they're not going to put something like that in the hood. I just, I just, it ain't going to happen. It's just not. Zoom out. Uh, I don't see, it ain't, it ain't one block from Bankhead. Huff Road. Perry Boulevard, Johnson, Perry Boulevard, where's Bankhead? Donald Lee Howell. All right. So here's Top Golf. That's a block. 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 It appears to be several miles away from. All right. All right. All right. Let me go ahead and say why I didn't think it was near Bank Hit. Top Golf has a certain demographic. Where it is, it fits very well into that demographic because there are multi million dollar homes in that area, several. I just didn't see it being in Bank Hit where I know they tore down the projects, but I know they did not replace those projects with million dollar homes. Not yet. So I, I was just like, come on now. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, Payless Stadium. Let's see. Uh, stadium stats. Went back and rewrote my goals for the year. I do that when I feel lost or the hustle tires me. I'm looking for a hustle porn. Got to stay grounded. That's a good idea. Douglas Jones. 
If an individual has unlimited internet access and a smartphone, they can access an avalanche of excellent motivation and prosperity in enabling videos. No, Maxwell, they took more than 800 pairs. They took the store. They cleared out the store. That's why I know they had to have a truck. Pretty much. And see, they've been pushing the hood back. Golf is unusually high in Metro Atlanta for some reason. Carry. Cool. All right. L l let me just once again say that area was never, ever poor. That area was never, ever poor. It was never, ever poor. So, all right. Uh, once again, we have 142 people watching. I need more likes and I need more super chats because we're about to get into some more training because uh, I'm going to go a little bit wild. All right. So let's get back onto this environment thing. <clears throat> I see a lot of comments. Uh, we have people who are in the hood. A lot of people agree with me. A few people have a different opinion, so that's all cool. As long as we are respectful with it. All right. So I saw wealth everywhere in my environment. It became a norm. And when I was in the storage auction business, when I was, um, it always seemed wasteful to have two cars. I could have did it back then, but it just didn't make sense to have two cars. Um, I'm going to tell you when I look at this, how it happened, because let's first, let's talk about the apartment complex, nicest apartment complex I ever lived in. And there were doctors, there was, I mean, there was beamed up, there was Porsche, there was even a Ferrari in this apartment complex. So what happened to me subconsciously is I soaked up a lot of that essence. And what I mean is wealth is not just money and property, but wealth is a spirit. And I soaked up the spirit of wealth and I started to do bigger and better things because it seemed it didn't seem outrageous. It didn't seem. Um, it didn't seem crazy it didn't seem um impossible because i saw so many people living like i wanted to live and it just happened and then i got a house in dunwoody which was only like five miles away from where i'm at now and then i came back because even though dunwoody is a nice area i noticed a change it's only five miles away, but I, and I mean, where I lived, I was probably three, four minutes from Perimeter Mall. But there was a distinct difference in Dunwoody and then Sandy Springs. And it, it's just wild because as you get closer and closer to the Buckhead, populations change, real estate property uh, prices go through the roof. Because, uh, like I say, a teardown ranch here is like three ninety nine to four fifty. Uh, same house near Buckhead, literally two miles away, is six hundred thousand. Same house. So I started to, oddly enough, begin to feel wealthy. That's a strange thing, but once again, wealth is a spirit. It's a spirit first, then it turns into thoughts. Then thoughts turn into concepts. Then actually, let me just write this down. Make sure y'all get it. Wealth is a spirit. 
this is kind of like one of those things like the soul, you know, we know it exists, but we don't know how we can't measure it, which then turns into thoughts. Then it turns into concepts. Then it turns into a process first. Then it turns into a beta test. Then it turns into product or a service. Then it turns into money. Then it scales. Thoughts, concepts, process, beta test, product, service, money. So this is one two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven steps. And this is why I keep saying you're not going to find simple solutions to complex problems. Becoming rich and wealthy is a complex problem. And just this, because one of the things I tell you guys is to write down your goals, right? Write down your goals. Make sure that you look at them all the time because then you're, you, because this is what it is. It's the spirit of wealth. Then the thoughts, you start thinking wealth thoughts. Then you get into the concepts, the process, the beta test. And then you get into the money. And then once you get the money, you start to scale it up. This is what happened to me because I started to think, what about this? And what about that? What can I do to get this thing? Because I now believe I can get a $2.2 million house. I now believe my next car is probably going to be a Porsche 911. But here's the thing. I'm not selling what I already have. I'm keeping the Audi. I'm keeping the BMW and I'm going to buy a Porsche, which means now I got to get a house with a three to four car garage. So the thoughts, and these were just thoughts, thoughts. I was thinking about it. And then the concept is a written plan. The process is acting on that plan experimenting then that leads to your first beta test which is your product work out the kinks then that turns into a product or service which you sell then that turns into money and that all starts with the spirit now I'm about to blow your mind let me make sure that I get to, let's see. Now, we're, we're going to go in another direction. So once again, I want everyone that's listening to me to support the stream with a $5 super chat or more. Because now, we're about to get into something really ugly. So now we have wealth is a spirit. Well, guess what? <clears throat> Let's just do it in red. Poor is a spirit. All right. Let's just slow it down a little bit. Poor is a spirit. So the first thing is, I ain't shit. Then the second thing is, it is not worth the effort.
only white people or rich people live like that. I might as well get drunk. Get drunk or high. This is the reason people do drugs because the reality of their life is horrible. So, number one, I ain't shit. Number two, it's not worth the effort. Number three, four, I might as well rich. Now, number five is an absolute bitch. You attack. people you perceive to be doing better than you. I ain't shit. It's not worth the effort. Only rich, only white rich people live like that. I might as well get drunk or high. You attack people uh, to be doing better than you. Six, you contemplate I know I, that's misspell suicide. A lot of people damn, <laughs> I hit the wrong thing. Uh, six, you think about suicide. Seven, You give up on life. Eight, you get old and grouchy. Nine, regrets everything. So that's the um, spirit of poor it gets into your oh 10 deeply embedded in your mindset so just like wealth is a spirit poor is a spirit and when I was in that boarding house, that was my thought process. It's like, you know, how hard as I try, it don't work out. These folks making all this money off me. And everywhere I turned, it was like me, 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 woe is me. I never contemplated suicide and I never got addicted to drugs. And I will tell you why I didn't drink the whole time I was in the boarding house. I saw all around me people who were addicted to things and some of them were really good people and then they would get that thing and just turn into a demon i didn't want to be like that and there's a lot of young men and women who live in the hood who are surrounded by all of this tragedy disaster bullshit fucked upness and they're trying to maintain the proper mindset to be successful. But because if you do things differently than what hood rules dictate, then you are a sellout. So it's an insidious process of low expectations reinforced with even more low expectations. And that environment is so strong that you now have well-off black men and women who become susceptible to it, who grew up in rich to middle-class households, who then be, get caught up that they become poor. They grew up rich, but then trying to keep it real, trying to keep it black, then they enter into poverty. 
because of the mindset and the pervasiveness of the hood. Because I see some of this stuff in the comments trying to like, hey, the hood make a lot of money, blah, blah, blah. If I had my way, I would tear down every fucking hood I could and replace it with moderate working class housing and education programs. I would tear every one of them down. I would get rid of every ghetto because they're breeding grounds for bad expectations, bad lives, um, health issues, criminals, criminals. And that's what you get. And I see all of these notions like the hood ain't that bad. I remember having this conversation with James, who I don't even think is alive anymore because uh, he could be, but I don't think so. Because he was an alcoholic. And this was about 1997, 97, 98. And we were sitting in the living room and he was just like, oh, the hood's a lot of fun. If you know where to go, if you know who not to offend. And I was just hearing him list all of the things you had to do to have fun in the hood. I was like, man, that seems like an obstacle course. It's like, nah, man, if you're born there and you grow up in it, you know what you know. But if you like an outcomer or someone like you, yeah, you can get your you get your get your wig split. And I was just sitting there like, you gotta be kidding me. The hood is so pervasive. And then this is where practical and impractical come in. Because the hood teaches you to be practical. Because if you're gonna give me extra money, you probably gotta have some fall off a truck. Or you gotta have a come up. Or like the guy who lived adjacent to me, he was the bootleg man. He used to sell beer on Sundays. He sold beer for a dollar. I've seen people go there six times. He was probably making three, four hundred bucks every Sunday. Had a big old freezer. He just sell beer. He went to Costco or Sam's, bought a bunch of beer. And he made money. <laughs> you funny green machine. Sassy Moxie, if you spent 40 years of your life thinking this way, overtime working class and raise your children that way, do you have to change help? Do you, how do you help to change minds? Uh, this is why I'm doing this stream. Hopefully it can reach a parent or a kid and let them know that there are options. There are things that they can do. They can make changes because I was in that environment and I got out. And I had a lot of people talking shit about me because I got out. You turned your back on the hood. You should have made your money and stayed in the hood and been a shining model. I think I told this story before, but one night I was walking home from the Marta station in the hood, coming from my second job, not messing with anybody. This Chevy Impala with some dudes in it, smoking weed. I could smell it was thick. And they started yelling all kinds of stuff, playing loud music. And then I'm walking. I noticed that the music was getting louder versus further away. And I looked back and I saw they were backing up. I didn't know these people. Never saw that car before. And something said, run. So I took off. I was around People Street. And I saw this house with this big fence. And I don't know how I jumped over that fence, but I did. And I laid flat. And they were looking for me. And they're like, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Why were they looking for me? I didn't know these people. It was no one I knew. I just had a feeling, me, hardworking dude, walking home, I could have became a fucking statistic trying to represent in the hood. And this is something that a lot of people don't want to talk about. You got good men and women, young boys and girls, children and babies, fucking shot and harmed over some hood shit just being in the hood. Just being there, not committing any crimes, not doing anything, just being there. It's just not a good place to be. Honey Bunny didn't seem attainable. Nope. All right, y'all giving good advice to Sassy Moxie. All right, y'all helping out. Blood sport, mistaken identity. 
which could have been, I could have looked like someone they had beef with and they just shot me on the humbug. That proves my point even more. That proves my point even more. CC them. We victimize each other in the poor neighborhoods all day long. Douglas Jones, so am I. They were looking for me. So part of the problem is, and this happens all the time, and it even happens with the police. This grandmother who was shot and made the news, she lived about two miles away from where I was living at the time. They bum rushed and this grandmother got shot. I don't care what anyone says. Fuck the hood. And it ain't like fuck the people in the hood, but fuck the hood, fuck the environment. But you got people who want to cling to that because they don't know their history. For a lot of people, being black stopped with slavery. You know, forget the whole 2,000 years before slavery. That doesn't count. Uh, Johnny, well, I bet you don't have them problems now, Carl. No! Uh, sometimes when I'm walking, I'll have someone stop. And, but the thing is, they make their intentions very clear. Excuse me, I'm looking for directions. Something like that'll happen. Not, oh, motherfucker, what's up? Hey, you! Hey, you! Hey, you! <sighs> Honestly, now that I think about it, well, I've thought about it a long time. I think that I, that was a gang initiation deal. Hence the smoking of the weed, getting the person off. I think I could have ended up being shot on that road. Living in the hood. Green Machine, truth be told, I'm a trained auto tech, but really don't have time to fix my three broken cars due to being a truck driver. Bloodsport 1, the hood is designed to pause in and reach for nothingness. That sounds like some of a sister soldier novel, which I highly recommend. Stadium says, had to move back to the hood when I was young, never hung out with them, but Everybody that lived there are fucked up now. It's designed to fuck you up and it's designed to keep you there. Uh, be real. Tupac said he tried to stay in the hood with money and they would sit on his car and scratch his car. That's when he realized that if he wanted to something better, he had to move out the hood. Wow. Wow. That's deep. The poverty mindset is self-destructive and perpetuated by social engineering. I agree. Bless what people want to claim the hood because they aim for the street life. That is just crazy. All right. Uh, I want you all to hit that super chat. Five dollars. I'm getting ready to depart. And. Uh, let's see. This is um, today is Sunday. So there's already a video on Hustlers Kung Fu. And there is. There's a video of Disruptive Mail, if you hadn't seen it. And I think I'm going to start the Politic or Philosophy channel. And once again, I'm about to give you all some games. So be hitting those super chats. The way that YouTube works, and I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it, is when you send traffic off of the platform, they penalize your channel. Now, you've seen channels grow and make a lot of money and they still send traffic off the platform. But this is the thing you don't know. That channel has some videos with some extremely high retention rates, like people are watching 100 percent of that video, 90 some percent of that video. So that's why they can do that. But if you have a regular channel and I've seen this with uh, Disruptive Mail, Disruptive Mail, I got videos on there. I got one video that's got like 12,000 views. I got another one that's eight. I got one video that got four, almost 5,000 views in a week. And that channel doesn't have as many subscribers as this channel. And I, I'm, all, I'm actually getting more views than I have subscribers on some videos. And I have many theories on this, but I'm not going to bore you with that. But if you start a new YouTube channel, you should start one 
that's pure information and then refer, you know, like referral or a handoff, like the four legged relay to that channel. And, and anyone that leaves the channel should be because everything, everyone's going to be referred to this channel to buy products and stuff. So when you hear me say, hey, go over here to get your free ebook, that's why I'm saying it, because I know how YouTube works. And I feel within two years or less that Disruptive Mail will have more subscribers in this channel, more views than this channel. All right. So be sure to go ahead. And if you catch the replay, just go below the video and super chat. And this evening, I'm going to do a piece about email marketing. I just wanted to do this because I saw the comment because you're not going to get rich doing practical shit. It ain't going to happen. You're just not. It ain't going to happen. And you got many people out here. They're selling you something because they need for you to believe that because I look at the storage auction business, which I worked 12, 16 hours a day, made good money, made great money, still put me above, you know, 99 point some percent of the people in the world. But I made more money sitting on my ass in my basement or a spare bedroom selling my book not working as hard because I was working very efficiently. And this is another, I, I, I'll share this with you. I took a video from I am Cameron, which now is hustlers Kung Fu. And I moved it to disruptive mail. And that video was on, I am Cameron seven, eight months had a hundred, 152 views. That same video at Disrupted Mail is at 650 views in less than 24 hours. Same video. So audiences are very, very important because that video eventually will get to a thousand views. Uh, it'll go past a thousand views because one of the things I've noticed with Disrupted Mail that doesn't happen here is my videos live longer, much, much longer. Uh, here they kind of top out. Well, they were because they're starting to scale, but I know because YouTube throttles your, your traffic. But it's not like Facebook. Facebook does it to everybody. If you've got really good videos that people want to watch and you're not seeing uh, traffic off the platform, then YouTube will push your video. They really will. So you're going to see a lot more stuff that's coming. And then this evening, I'm going to have an offer because I didn't feel it was appropriate to do this offer because there's some new training that's coming up and you're going to love it. You're going to love it. All right. So be sure to subscribe, comment and like, and I will see you guys this evening.